we leave off Jonah chapter 1 verse 3 he go he's on his way to Tarshish which many believe is Spain from the presence of the Lord in other words I'm going to run away from God lots of luck verse 4 but the Lord sent out a great wind now in the book of Jonah you find great city chapter 1 verse 2 3 I mean 2 uh, excuse me 3 verse 2 5 and 4 1 that's Nineveh you find the great wind that we're talking about right now uh, chapter 1 verse 12 we find a great tempest in chapter 1 verse 17 we find a great fish great kindness chapter 4 verse 2 and we'll see other key words in the book of Jonah that, you know, they don't believe. Scholars don't believe this. I don't believe in scholars. I don't think they're going to be in heaven. But he sent out a great wind into the sea. It will be in the Mediterranean Sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So the ship was like to be broken. Jonah is on a ship in a storm, and the ship is about to be wrecked. Does that sound familiar? Jesus was on the boat with the fishermen, and there was a great tempest, and the water was all, was all inside the ship. The mariners, the shipmen, the seamen, were afraid. Now, this has got to be like the disciples. This has got to be a storm of all storms. Like the, the, uh, the ship storm that uh, Paul was in. If the seamen are afraid, if Peter, James, and John, professional fishermen are afraid. Now, we understand the book of Acts. Luke was afraid. He's a medical doctor. And cried every man unto his God, small g. And this area, this would have been Poseidon, Hydros, or Cato. Notice the word Hydros. You know, you're not going to get God to bless America when the days of our week and the days of our months are named for Roman people and God. You're not going to be blessed by God when your planets, except Earth, are named for God. When you call your spaceship program the Dragon, and you got the spaceship program called Apollo. You want God to bless you. You want a revival in America. You got to rename everything. In concordance of the Bible and God. That ain't going to happen. And cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea. Which they did in the book of Acts. We're trying to keep the ship afloat. Anything, throw it overboard. Because the less weight in the boat, the boat will get more buoyancy. And when it comes down to it, the cargo or your life, bye bye cargo. To lighten it of them. Again, that's to make the ship more. Try to make it more buoyancy. But Jonah was going down. There he goes then, going down. Knows the word down in the book of Jonah. Into the sides of the ship. And he lay and was fast asleep, like Jesus. Jesus is asleep on a pillow. 
and the disciples and the fishermen are all in a panic. Now they didn't call on the G-O-D, small G-O-D. They called on the big G-O-D. Wake up, Jesus. Come on, Jesus, wake up. We're going to die. So the shipmaster, the owner, the man in charge of the ship, not necessarily the captain, this would be the owner of the ship, maybe the captain, came to him, Jonah, and said, what means thou old sleeper? But he said, Jesus, what are you doing to sleep? Arise and call upon thy God. Capital G. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Hey, everybody's praying to their God. What are you doing sleeping? How come Jonah is asleep in the midst of a terrible, frightening storm? I mean, we don't know that much of Jonah, but I don't think he was a shipment. He was a, he was a prophet elsewhere, we read. He's asleep. People's lives are at stake, and Jonah's asleep. People's lives are at stake in Nineveh, and he runs. This is the church. People are going to hell, and they're asleep. They're couch potatoing. And they don't care that people look at perishing. They don't care if people are perishing. And they're thinking, well, come to church. That's it. I did my thing. I invited them to church. Sleepers don't get rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. How in the midst of a storm, how in the midst today, 2022 and June 27, all the troubles people are having, all the death, and you're worried about Roe versus Wade in the murdering of a baby, which is murder, but you don't care about their soul. You don't care about the preaching the gospel. And when the preachers preach this weekend about Rover, oh my glory to God, stand in ovation. What happens if, 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 if they were to preach about your sin? You wouldn't be so loud on your knees asking God for repentance. You would figure Jonah be out on the deck right now. Oh God, I'm sorry. If you get me to land, I will go to Nineveh. No, he's asleep. The church is asleep. Because they don't care, and Jonah doesn't care. That's sad. That's really sad. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come. Jesus said, go. Let us cast lots. Again, this is the drawing the straw. The man gets the short straw. The eight ball, the black ball, the blue ball. You know, paper, scissors. However they did it. They did not vote. They didn't vote. This is how they chose the disciple to replace Judas. They didn't say, all right, all the apostles of the Formantis, raise your hand. <laughs> they didn't do that. <coughs> that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. They have an idea somebody's causing this evil. So they're going to say, okay, let's find out who. 
Now, there, there are mariners praying for gods. And they're going to reach out to their gods. And some are probably thinking black magic. Island magic. I mean, they've been to islands. Voodoo. All kinds of realm of beliefs and, and draw up the spirits, the Ouija board. There's only one man on that boat for God, as far as we can see. And the evil is not a sin. Evil is here's this big storm. And I told you before, evil does not have to be sin. Evil could be the consequence of this. What's the sin? Jonah ran away from God. And Jonah's sin is hurting other people. They have lost money with the cargo overboard. Think about that. Christian, your sleeping is causing the lives and the care of the people and family and friends around you. And your church. You're throwing the gold, silver, precious stone overboard. So they cast lots, and I don't know how they did, but they did something, and the lot <laughs> fell upon Jonah. Lord's like, okay, Jonah, you got the short straw. Jonah, you got the only blue ball, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know how they did it. Many, many different ways. King Saul did that with Jonathan. Who, who, who had some food here? What's the problem? You know, all the world will find out, Christian, who and what you are, one day. Then said they unto him, "Tell us, we pray thee." For who causes this evil upon us? What is thy occupation? Whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people are thou? Now, remember, the storm is all around them, and they're playing 21 questions. And he said unto him, I'm a Hebrew. He is. Today, the first thing, well, I'm a Christian. You know what the Christian would say? I would let my light shine. Very dim light. How many people have come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, as their Savior, excuse me, by your by your light? How bright each other? How many people have gotten saved by your light? No? Huh? Jonah's putting on the spot. I fear the Lord. <laughs> really? What on earth are you doing on that ship, buddy? If you feared the Lord, you'd be on the way to Nineveh. A lot of Christians say, well, I fear the Lord. I praise the Lord. What do you do? Well, I went to church. Isn't that good enough? While you're causing catastrophe all around, your sin is wrecking your family. It's wrecking your job. You're not witnessing. It's causing people to be perishing. I'm a Christian. I fear God. And the other one, I go to church. Half the churches today, three quarters of churches today, God wouldn't even give you a dime. God would give you a dime and expect a dollar back. I fear the Lord. Who brought the storm, Jonah, and who's asleep? Everybody's out on the deck praying to their gods. What are you doing, Jonah? You know what Jesus was doing with that storm? Jesus did not fear. He's asleep. I know we're going to the other side. That's what he told the disciple. Get in the ship. Let's go to the other side. Now, 
the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Now, why did he say that? Why is he talking about the creator? Because if you come back up to verse number five, so they were afraid, he wasn't afraid, and cried every man to his God. Well, if you're praying to Poseidon, Poseidon is not the creator. Poseidon's only the god of the seas. If you're praying to Neptune, Neptune didn't create nothing. He's just the guardian of the waters. I mean, they have gods for everything. Even the churches today, they got gods. They got the Sunday morning service. Yeah, God, yeah. Then they got the Sunday afternoon football. We can't go Sunday night or Wednesday night because we got the we got the, the, the great television program that we can't miss. Semifinals. We got the great Super Bowl, and we gotta bring that into the church house. With the big screen TV. We got to throw God out. So we can bring in. Our God. And these very churches say. Oh you know. Pray for a revival. You ain't getting it. You ain't getting it. Not when you have idols in your heart. And paganism in your church. So Jonah's, he's witnessing them. I don't know if he knows he's doing it. So he's, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, that's Jehovah, God of heaven, the creator. He made the, the sea and the dry land and this big storm. Don't forget that, Jonah. Then were the men exceedingly afraid. They're even more afraid. They are afraid of Jehovah, the creator. What's the Bible say to fear the Lord? Beginning of wisdom. That's important to realize they were exceedingly afraid. Who are they afraid of? They're afraid of Jehovah. The God of heaven, the God that sees in the dry land. And we have this Hebrew here. I don't know if they know the curse of Abraham and Jacob. If you touch them and mess with them, it'd be a curse for you. I don't know if they know that. And said unto him, Why hast thou done this? Uh oh. For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Where do we where do we start today? Verse three. He fled from the presence of the Lord. When he bought his ticket to Tarshish. Why you want passage on our ship? I'm getting away from Jehovah. You know what that was to them at that moment? Oh, okay. As long as you had the money. I'm fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them. Where do you read in verse 9? He told them then. And so he says, I'm a Hebrew, Jehovah, God of heaven, God has seen the dry land. The men were afraid. And the next question is, why have thou done this? And it's not, they knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord. They say, why did you do that? You buying that ticket, telling us you, you are fleeing the Lord, got aboard this ship. This is why this is all happening.
I don't know what's going to happen to Great White Room Judgment. But when that lost man is about to be condemned and cast into the lake of fire forever, and he has all his books open, And I know he's been witness. It's going to come out, this Christian, maybe that, you know. Those people told him. And he had access today to a Bible. But I wonder when he points that finger to you, if you don't witness, you don't tell, you're a sleeping Christian. If he points the finger to you and says, Jesus, wait a minute. That man, that, that man over there never told me nothing. I don't know what's going to happen at that point. But when that person looks down, Ezekiel says there will be blood on the fingertips. And the only way you get blood in your fingertips is when you've been actually involved in killing somebody. I don't know what's going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ. Save people. And if you're a pastor of a church, a Sunday school teacher, or a deacon, or even just a church member sitting in the pew, I don't know what's going to happen that moment when, when you go before Jesus, your entire life is wood, hay, and stubble. And it burns up ashes. You've been a fraud. You deceived. You didn't do nothing. You didn't get a well done. You were just an absolute failure as a Christian. And you turn around to face your family that's saved, to face your church that's saved. And if you're a pastor, if you're a Sunday school teacher, and you got to turn around, because I think we're all going to be judged by family and by churches. And you turn around, what, what is that reaction when you've been caught with your hand in the cookie jar? You're a liar. You're a fraud. But you made everyone think you were the best Christian around. What's going to be that moment? Then I, I think we're going to be judged by our families and by the churches. When your church is standing there and you walk, and you are knelt down before Jesus, and the, the ashes are brushed away, and there's gold, there's silver, there's precious stones, and here comes the, the, the holy hands, I mean holy, righteous, and with old, with a crown in his hand to put it on your head. And you hear the God of creation, the God of Calvary, turn and say, well done. That's all I want to hear, well done. And a whole bunch of children from a missionary that you support come running up and hugging and kissing you. And you turn to your church that hated you, that despised you. You were that wicked Christian. You were that Christian. Oh, the King James Bible. Oh, he preaches on the street. Oh, look how bad he Oh, Easter. He hates that. And he turns around and looks at the congregation. Time to throw our crowns down. Where's your crown, Pastor? Where's that phony deacon, Pastor? Where's all the people you invited to the church, Christians? I have one more thing, I, I, and this I can't prove in the script. But can you just imagine Jesus turned to that Christian, despised and rejected by his church because he served? All they did, then God, they shall suffer persecution. Have I become your enemy because I've told you to? And he, Jesus turns to him, he says, you get this city. Oh, Lord, I'm not worthy. And he turns to your church, your pastor, but you guys are under his authority. What, Lord? 
you're in charge of that city, and those, your church that despise you, they're under your authority. What saves you? First lesson, big King James Bible is the ultimate word of God. And you have to listen. You have to sit under it. Jonah's asleep. Everybody's in despair. Everyone's, we're dying. We're losing everything. Just to stay alive. And you stand up in the flood. Amen to a preacher the Roe versus Wade. Hey, we got victory. Hey! And you don't tell anyone about Jesus and you forget the fact is half the United States can still do abortion. Connecticut, one of them. You didn't win nothing. Disney and these major businesses are saying, if you need an abortion, we will pay for you to go to a state that will do it. What on earth are you clapping about? And then when you get a man that preaches on the street and, and you see it, there's a car pulled over the side of the road and there's someone talking, not one person will say, hey, what was all that about? Well, that's, you didn't want to hear about Jeff. Jeff was unsure about Jesus. Jeff really didn't like the Old Testament. Jeff had different ideas of belief in the Bible. Jeff didn't even know there was a church building there. Which had nothing to do with nothing. But by the way, a lot of people in the front of the church where I sit, I say, "Look, well, I say something about the church right there." They didn't even know there was a church there. You're doing a great job. They don't know you're there. They don't care you're there. Jeff walked away. I don't know if he believed, but but Jesus is God. He didn't. He was agnostic. Paul quoted, I've been told Paul quoted from the Old Testament, and he's like, yeah, okay, yeah. I told him to pray honestly with God and read one chapter a night with John. I told my daughter the other last night. Been out there many times, been summer, very, very hot. I've had two, I had three, four people pull over. One guy gave me a good bottle of water, Zephyr Hills, and a sandwich. I, I, no, I didn't need a sandwich, but thank you very much. I've had somebody pull over and say, you know, I say, I got water right here. That guy last night, he had a beer. He goes, he goes I'll get you some water. I'll get you anything you want. I like, no, I got water here. With my church right there, I haven't had one person in my church come out and check on you. And then when, when I'm sitting there, and, you know, it was hot and free. I'm sitting there and I got my bottle and I had to have the auction. It was hot out there, wasn't it? <laughs> Hotter in hell. I met a man named Jeff. I didn't give him the four spirituals. I gave him the gospel. I gave him Jesus Christ. I gave him what to do. I gave him gospel track, too, about salvation. See, I wasn't asleep. Go come to church. Go to that's a sleep Christian. And when I was talking to Jeff yesterday, he asked me some questions. I'm like, I did not have the Bible reference. And to me, I gotta go get some scriptures. I gotta memorize that scripture. So if somebody asks me again, I'm not gonna be left in my pants now. That's what happened with me with the Jehovah Witnesses. That's why I can do battle with Jehovah Witnesses. Because where I put down with the scriptures, I look for the scriptures, I memorize those scriptures. I need help now because it's a little hard to memorize. But i got to find some scriptures. When he asked, when somebody asked me the question that Jeff asked me last night, I don't want to be pet with my pants down. I don't want to be found asleep. Because that man is perishing. Invite him to church. All right, let's say I invited him to church last Sunday. 
because the complete mess is about abortion. How bad America is with abortion, and next week will be how great America is. Shishku Bob Fourth July Law. That's America. Jonah is asleep. Everybody's in turmoil. The shipmaster came and woke. And, and, you know what the worst thing is? When people are in turmoil, and you say you've got your light that shines, they got troubles and problems. They don't come to you. They don't know who you are. I've had people who I work with. I've had neighbors. I, I, I had people I associated with myself. They knew who I was. They know what I was. And when they had troubles and problems, they come up to me quietly. I need a prayer. No, I'm sorry. You know, I, I was making fun of you with the rest of the guys there. I, I got something serious in my life. Can you? I'll break down right then and there. Let's pray now. Really? Yeah. You got light that shines, but they don't know you what that light is. It could be a cigarette light. It could be a bug light. Jonah could say, I let my light shine <laughs> down deep inside the ship, and that's not where you need the light. They need a lighthouse. I'm going to show you Jonah, type of church, type of Christ, the type of Christian. He said he would. He, he said, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Christian. Excellent Christian. And they knew it. 